Welcome to Twin Cherry Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use a controller with Dolphin on Android to play Nintendo Wii games. If you want to know how to install and set up Dolphin on Android, check the links in the description for all my Android emulation tutorials. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Razer Kishi controller, but this also works with PS4, PS5 and any Xbox controller. The biggest problem with emulating Nintendo Wii games is motion control. While the absolute best way to play these games is by using the original controllers, you can emulate them with a standard controller and it is still very good. Another issue is there are so many different variations that it can be very confusing. So today I'm going to focus on the Wiimote Nunchuck configuration, focusing on Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now before we begin, I hate doing this kind of thing so I'll be quick, but 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel and I understand why. You get the information you need and you don't need me again. So I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, although it will help. But I am going to ask you to hit the like button if you find the information useful. Sorry to be that guy. Let's get back to the tutorial. So let's take a look at setting up a controller configuration for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This is a game that I thought I would never get to play on Dolphin, never mind Dolphin Android, because it has one of the most complicated control schemes in the world thanks to the Motion Plus. But the wonderful developers at Dolphin have done a lot to support Motion Plus and I am very happy with the outcome. But this has taken me a long time to figure out, and I think, I actually think I've got the best setup possible. I haven't completed the game with this controller configuration yet, because I've only just figured it out, uh, but I have been playing it for a couple of hours now, and everything seems to work, and I'll show you that working now. But let's just get in to actually setting it up. So, like I do with many of my Nintendo Wii games on Dolphin Emulator, I set up a custom control scheme, so I hold down on Skyward Sword, and then I go to Edit Game Settings. The first thing you're gonna want to do actually is to hold down and perform a system update. And as you can see, I've already done it. So say the emulated Wii console is already up to date. So this is just with newer games. It's just gonna update it to the latest version of the Nintendo Wii home system so that the game will work. If you start the game without doing it, sometimes it's gonna ask you to update the Wii console, and that's how you do it. You go to the Perform System Update. So we go to edit game settings and I'll just show you a couple of my graphic settings that I use on mine. I'm using a Snapdragon 888 on a Xiaomi 11T Pro. I use the video backend of Vulkan. I use the shader compilation of hybrid Uber shaders. If we go to the enhancements, I keep it one times native because like I've said many times before, you're not going to be running Nintendo Wii games at 1080p on Dolphin Android unless you've got one of those fancy 1500 Risen machines, which I would love to take a look at one day. Go to the hack section, skip EFB access from CPU on, ignore format changes, that needs to be switched on as well. And then on the advanced section, I'm going to enable progressive scan, just because I prefer it that way. You don't need to have that one, that one's not as important as the others. So in the game settings menu, I'm going to go to Wii Import, Wii Remote, and then press Emulate it as always. And then for the extension, we're going to need the nunchuck. Press the nunchuck and it'll bring up the nunchuck options. For the C button, I use the L3 button, because the C button is to look around in the game. It's to bring up the look around menu. The Z button, I set to L2, because that's the lock on and target. So when I hold L2, it's going to lock on or it's going to reset my camera. The stick is the control stick. So on the analog stick, I'm going to go up, down, left, right. Press them individually and go up, down, left and right on my analog stick. Swing, we don't need that on the nunchuck. Same with tilt, you don't need to tilt the nunchuck in the game, but we do need to shake the nunchuck, because what shaking the nunchuck does is bring up our shield, and it also performs the shield bash within the game. So I like to set that to L1. So X, Y, and Z all set to L1. So when I press L1, it's going to simulate shaking the, shaking the shield, and it's going to bring up the shield. Now in the game, you can actually just shake the shield up once and it'll bring the shield up it won't perform the shield bass but we don't have that sort of intricacy here and it does work out fine without it if you do want a more intricate control scheme then just buy the nintendo switch and the nintendo switch version then for the buttons a which is going to be dash i set that to a and b i set that to r2 as always because b is the back trigger on the wiimote so whenever i need to do that i'll press the r2 button one and two are used in this game and they are for the help menu and they're also for another menu that for your item pouches and things like that so i set those to x and y so i set one to x and i set two to y start and select i set to start and select that's the plus and minus minus to select and plus to start and the home button you don't need the home button because the home button is the home button for the nintendo wii console now this is where we're going to get into the intricacies of the motion emulation so the ir receiver 
like with Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, I set that to the right analog stick with up, down, left, and right. And then forward and backward, we don't need. Swing is now going to simulate swinging the Wiimote controller in a certain direction, like you would with the sword in Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. So what we need to do with this is we need to set this also to the right analog stick. Up, down, left, and right. And then forward is for the stabbing motion. So I set that to R3. So whenever I press R3, the Link will stab with his sword. Backwards, I haven't found any use for backwards right now. I haven't found any reason to swing my controller backwards in my first two hours of playing the game. So I keep that blank. Tilt. Now, tilt we use in the flying part of the game. You can use the device motion sensors like I do with Super Mario Galaxy, or you can use my little trick here that I use so that I can use the left analog stick whilst flying to move left and right. So left, I set to left on the left analog stick, and right, I set to right on the right analog stick. Now, as far as I'm aware, when I've been playing this, it hasn't had any effect on the movement whatsoever. Now, with forward and backwards, if we put them on the left analog stick, it's going to make Link do a slashing motion with his sword, and it is very annoying, because every time you go to move, he does a slash with his sword. It does work while you're flying, but it also has that added caveat of being every time that you move forward, you're going to be slashing your sword, and it can be very annoying. So what I do is I set forward to up on the D-pad because up on the D-pad rarely has any effect within the game and it's kind of worked out perfect in that I don't really press up on the D-pad that much just in a couple of menus and I can do that with the left analog stick anyway a lot of the time. Backwards however I did set to down on the D-pad but that also means that you come off your bird by pressing down on the D-pad. So what do we do for that? So for tilting backwards which is to slow down your bird I'm going to set that to right on the D-pad because we rarely use that right on the D-pad as well. Shake is to simulate shaking and we need this to do spin attacks and we also need it for other things. So shake, I always set that to R1 like I do on Super Mario Galaxy. I set that to R1. So we've got two shakes. R1 is, R1 is Wiimote shake, L1 is Nunchuck shake. Press the two together, we do a spin attack. And I'll show you how to do a couple of the attacks in a second when we get into the game. D-pad. Always standard up, down, left, and right on the D-pad. This game, like Super Mario Galaxy 2, doesn't rely that much on the D-pad. So it's actually kind of a win-win situation that we use it for multiple things. And that is our controller setup. So I'm just going to back out, back out again, and it's going to save the settings to soup01, which is the game code for Skyward Sword. I'm going to get into the game and I'm going to show you a couple of the controls, how they work, how to play the game using these controls and how this is a great, but not perfect control setup. There is no perfect control setup. If you have a perfect control setup, please let me know down in the comments. I have searched far and wide on the internet for this. And uh, this is the best I have come up with by mashing together a multiple amounts of different controls. And I've been playing this game for at least four to five hours. Okay, so as usual, when we first play the game, I've got the overlay controls on. So I'm going to press back, go to this lovely blue menu that I love so much. Go to overlay controls, click toggle controls and toggle all off. Beautiful. Right, so now we're going to go through some of the controls and teach you how to play this game and teach you how to play this game using these controls. So the first thing is dash is set to A. And then if we want to do a roll, which Link does a lot, is we're going to want to press L1, which is the shake of the nunchuck, because shaking the nunchuck is the thing that you need to do physically with the motion controls to do a saucy little roll. Also, L1 is to bring up your shield and do the shield bash. So when someone comes at you, do the shield bass, press L1, and then to get rid of the shield, you can either put it away by pressing A, or you can swipe with your sword. You'll still have your shield out, but then you'll go into the attack formation, and we use the right analog stick to move and swing our sword. Lock on and change the camera, so if I face this way and press ZL, that's the lock on. If I want to lock on to any enemies that are around, I'll press that. To look around, I will press in L3, and that will bring up the look menu. Now, if I had motion controls active, I could use the motion controls to look around. Or if I'm very careful, now you have to be very careful with this and move around in smaller increments to move around. Because if we do just move up, it'll bring us out because it's swinging the Wiimote as well. So 
while this isn't while this works it isn't perfect you have to be very careful when you're looking around because sometimes like there when i was moving between left and right i get pulled out of it when i move to the left so i have to be very careful and very precise when i do this which means it's not going to be good for speed runs but it's going to be able to get you through the game and then to center you press down on the d-pad so let's get out of that and as far as swinging the sword is concerned as you can see i press down he strikes down i press up he strikes up left right and then diagonal as well which is one of the most beautiful things about this is this game wants you to be a bit precise with your swipes you can do that because it does simulate it almost perfectly so it's definitely good for playing the game. And for spin attacks, you usually have to shake the Wiimote and the Nunchuck together. So if we press L1 and R1, Link will do the, he'll do either a shield bash, or if you're, if you're quick enough, he will do a spinny, spinny spin. But that is only going one way. So to do the horizontal spin attack, you press L1 and swipe right or left at the same time. And as you can see, we're going right, left. Oh, you can even do that with up and down as well. Link is now exhausted. And that's pretty much most of the controls for Link. Let's go through the flying controls then. This is where I've probably earned your like here with these flying controls because previously I couldn't find a way to do this and now I have and I am very, very happy because the flying controls run almost perfectly but it's definitely enough to play the game. So tilting left and right, it's the left analog stick, the right analog stick. Nose dive, press up on the D-pad and we nose dive. And then to pull up, we press right on the D-pad and he pulls up. And then we swing to flap and create altitude. And it is almost as smooth as the Nintendo Switch version that I have played recently as well. I say almost as smooth because even the Nintendo Switch version can be quite infuriating as well. This is actually mapped to the controls and it makes me so happy because I've been wanting to play this game for a long time. I've never finished this game because I've never been able to get this far without the use of motion controls. And I never had a motion plus for my Nintendo Wii until 2020 during the pandemic. That's when I got mine. Oh, I'm going to die. Ah, it's all right. It automatically does it anyway. And there we go. That is it. That is my controller configuration for Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Let me know down in the comments if this is useful for you. Because I know a lot of people, ever since I started doing Dolphin videos, people have been asking me, why don't you do Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? Why don't you do Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? And the answer has always been, I just can't find a control scheme that I am comfortable with and I'm comfortable sharing. Because I don't want to share a control scheme with people and then it not actually work well so i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to get through this game and 100 percent it as soon as possible i've got a couple more videos that i want to make on dolphin android and i'm going to be moving over to different versions of dolphin as well but in the interim while i'm doing those i'm going to be playing this game hopefully to 100 percent completion on dolphin and hopefully it's going to work so if you find this information useful leave a like please a like really does at the bare minimum a like helps this channel grow and i'm really hoping for this channel to grow in the future if you want to see more videos about dolphin or emulation in general then please hit that subscribe button and you don't need to put notifications on because i do understand notifications are very annoying i have notifications switched off on every device that i have even my main messages and things i just turn notifications off i am sick to death of notifications but a subscribe would go a long way to helping this channel grow as well even though i do know that most people that are subscribed to channels don't watch every video that that channel puts out they just subscribe to show that they support the channel and i'm really hoping that you can support this channel i want to hopefully go to the point where i can actually make a lot more videos on emulation a lot more videos on dolphin in general because dolphin is by far my favorite emulator of all time i absolutely love playing with this emulator and it's been a passion project of mine since i first discovered it many many years ago and i'm now happy to start bringing tutorials check the link in the description for more dolphin android tutorials and even my dolphin windows tutorials i'm going to be making a mac tutorial i'm going to be making an ipad tutorial i'm going to be making a Anything that you can play Dolphin on, I'm going to try and make a tutorial for it. And I'm hoping to get that my hands on one of those lovely Risen Android devices at some point in the future. In which case, that would just be... Mwah, that would just be fantastic. If you could get one of those beautiful PCs in my hand, those portable PCs. Um, I can just play around with it as much as possible and just get all my favorite games running on it. It would be the one-stop device for all my emulation needs. Uh, I'm just rambling on because I know that... 
according to my analytics, nobody's here right now. Nobody's watching. If you are watching, then please leave the word sausage in the comments and we can get as many sausages as possible in the comments because I just love sausages. I love sausage and I love sausages. Um, I know that 99% of the people watching are not subscribed. I know 99% of the people watching have left now. So if you are still here, thank you very much. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful year. It is coming into 2023 now and I am excited for what this year brings. I say that every year that I'm excited and every year kind of works out the same. But I'm hoping that this year is better for you. I'm hoping that this year is better for me. Have a wonderful year and remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.